What's up, people? Welcome back. How you doing? Thanks. Doing well, too. Today, we're doing another lighting and cinematography breakdown. Uh, this was a couple days ago in my living room. I kind of was going for some sort of like interior day, slightly moody-ish, dark. So that's what we we're going for today. And uh, let's check it out. So hopefully you enjoyed that video and are eager to kind of see how I uh, created that look. For most of these videos, I try to make them under six minutes. So let's hopefully try to make it under six or seven minutes. Never happens. I think they usually become like 15, um, probably because I just ramble like this. And I also just want to note that before we start anything, I do want to express that I am not any sort of major big DP or anything like that. I'm pretty much just learning like you guys and my videos are essentially just me practicing and showing how I did something. Uh, not saying that this is the right way, the wrong way, or anything. It's just how I'm practicing and seeing what works for me. So um, yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. All right, so for gear, I used my Blackmagic Ursa. I was at 1000 ISO, 5600 Kelvin, F2.8. I also had four stops of ND. So the reason why I had four stops of ND was because I was exposing for the background window and making sure that they weren't blown out. And I had to essentially bring everything in the foreground the exposure value up to match the level that I was going for based off the exposure on the window. For lighting, I had two practicals. I had a 2000 Kelvin light bulb. I had a 2200 Kelvin light bulb. I also had my Falcon Eyes RX18 light matte bicolor, and I had a four foot Nanlite Pavo tube. I also had two black solids pretty much just going in through the doorways, blocking any light from any of the other rooms. So they weren't really tight to create a specific contrast ratio or anything. They were just kind of blocking light from other rooms and making sure, honestly, that my dogs wouldn't come in and bother me. So that's the equipment that I used for this entire project and they weren't changed throughout any of the different scenes. All right, so we're gonna be going over two different scenes from this sequence. The first one is the wide of me sitting at my desk. The second one, we're gonna push in for the close up. And the reason why I'm doing those two in particular is because the wide shot and the close up, they're pretty much have the same lighting setup, but there's one or two different things that you really have to do for a close up to, uh, to sell it a little bit better. So we're gonna be going over that, but first let's get into the wide setup. All right, so this is the first wide shot here. This is the establishing. And as you can see, I didn't shoot into the L of the room. I shot into the flat side of the room here. But the reason why I did that is because I wanted to play with symmetry. As you can see, the window and the wall are pretty much equal. The candles here on both sides. I also liked these candles as well, playing into the middle and having me kind of dead center in frame. Um, I just liked these kind of leading lines here and I just liked the way that this symmetrical image looked. Um, the candles also helped with creating a lot of depth. So these images, these candles right here in the foreground, these kind of play into a nice element of like shooting a frame within a frame. So even though the candles don't encompass the whole entire frame, I think of it as a very interesting look because you're looking at me, the subject, through these two candles in the foreground that are almost the same height and width. So it, it almost creates like a little box around me. Um, that creates the frame that's smaller within the bigger frame here. The next thing I want to note is the sky right here. As you can see, it's pretty fully exposed. So the reason why everything looks a little bit balanced is because I had four stops of ND in to make sure that I was exposing for the window here. And when you're exposing for the window and you don't have anything lit yet, everything that'll be in the shadows will really be dark in the shadows. So I had to make sure the exposure of the interior here brought up enough value so it matched with the outside and looked realistic and I wasn't pushing the camera's ISO. So first thing let's look at is this entire scene just exposed for the window. So as you can see, the window is exposed really well, but you can't really see much of anything because there's nothing inside the room that is being lit. 
So one of the first things I do when I try to light a scene is look for any use of practicals. And the scene that I was going for for this was just me sitting at a desk, going through my laptop, writing some notes, whatever it is. And uh, so I grabbed a desk lamp from a different room, attached it to the table, and instead of shining it directly at me where the light would be, a bare bulb would be pretty harsh on my face, I shined it down onto the table so that light would be reflected and bounced onto my face so it's a little bit softer. That lamp itself had a 2200 Kelvin uh, watt light bulb, so it was fairly warm. I also noted that the background was a little bland and needed a little bit of a color contrast coming from the blue windows. So I added another lamp in the background as you can see right here. And this one was a 2000 Kelvin lamp, uh, light bulb. And the thing that's really cool about this shade is it's red. So it already illuminates a very warm color that separates it from the rest of the image. And if you look onto the blinds here, it creates a nice kind of like blue uh, blue orange blue orange uh, gradient which I thought was kind of interesting and a little separated from the rest of the windows and the other thing I want to note is looking at this image even though as it, our job as a cinematographer isn't production design we have to make sure that the image looks and feels the way that we want so selecting this room had a lot of interesting wallpapers it had some candles and it just looked the most interesting to me compared to a room, say, with just white walls. And having this lamp here with the, with the red lampshade played really well with the color palette and tone of the wallpaper and the pillow. So that's something to keep in mind as well when you're shooting a, a, a specific scene. All right, so now after seeing what the practicals do to the image here, let's take a look at what this overhead ambient light is doing. So for the overhead ambient light, I used a four foot Nanlite Pavo tube. And I set that to 3200 Kelvin. So it was a little bit warm, but it wasn't as warm as the uh, lamps. The reason why is I didn't want to flood it with a warm tone and completely uh, contrast the color from the outside. I wanted to make it slightly more neutral, but still have a bit of a warmer hue. So a few things that this overhead does is just create a general overall ambience in the room. It kind of brightens up the entire image. The reason is because it's coming down and it's kind of bouncing off of this white table everywhere. And since it's a tube, it's kind of spreading out evenly and soft and it's not just coming directly down. So it's spreading and bouncing everywhere. So it's just overall raising the ambience of the room. Second thing that it does is create a nice top light on my head right here. As you can see, these little kind of uh, highlights in my hair. And the other thing it does is create a little highlight on these candles, which kind of shows that there is be there's like a light being uh, illuminated from over top, like it would be a chandelier. So it's kind of faking it um, without showing it because you would naturally think that there's like a chandelier or some sort of light uh, source coming from here, but you wouldn't think that it's obviously a tube. So that's just a great way to kind of fake overhead lights from chandeliers is adding like a tube or some sort of soft source to, to uh, disperse the light evenly throughout the image and bring up the overall ambience and create a nice top light. Next thing I want to note about the overhead light is as you could see my the right side of my face or the left side of my face, sorry, here is a lot more exposed. I didn't put the Nanlite tube directly in the middle of the table for one, because the chandelier was there, and two, because like the video I did last time with the green bathroom, I set it a little bit to the side just so there was more light coming down on one side of my face than it would the other. And I didn't do it too dramatically. I think there's a decent amount of exposure on uh, both sides of my face, but I, the reason why I added it to that side, the key side, is because I wanted to emphasize the light coming from the lamp on the table right here. So this lamp light is coming down and bouncing up this way. And the overhead is right here, coming down this way right here. So it kind of helps motivate the light from the lamp and create a nice overhead that spreads out pretty evenly and soft. All right, so after looking at what the overhead does as well as the practicals in this image, now let's take a look at the final scene here with the key light. All right, so as you can see, obviously once the key light is turned on, the overall exposure value in the scene is brightened tremendously. And the reason is because I have a direct soft source coming on the left side of my face. So the light was shining directly onto my face this way, helping again motivate the light coming from the lamp here onto my face, the overhead coming onto the top of my head here and this side spreading out pretty evenly, and the key light coming from this side of my face as well. 
So that really helps determine the key side as well as the contrast ratio. So all three of these lights have a purpose on exposing my face in a specific way. The overhead creates a really soft dispersing light across my face generally while highlighting a little bit more on my key side, but also bringing up the exposure value on my shadow side so it doesn't fall to black. The lamp creates the, the uh, practical source of where the light is coming from. If I didn't have the lamp there and I just had this light kind of shining in my face, people would not really understand where that light is coming from. But even though this lamp wouldn't make my face look like this exactly, it makes the viewer understand where the motivating source is coming from. And the key light is placed a little bit more sidey to fill in the rest of the key light that isn't being hit with the top uh, overhead and the lamp. But it's a very soft source, so it wraps very nicely. All right, so for this close-up, the lighting setup generally stayed the exact same, except for one major difference. When you're shooting a profile shot after you're shooting a wide or vice versa, depending on the mood you're going for and the contrast ratio and how dark or moody you wanna get it or how much fill you want in the shadow side, that determines where you wanna move the key light when you're shooting on a profile. All right, quickly, let's describe the relationship between the key light and the camera and where they're placed. As you see in the diagram in the first wide shot, the camera is placed dead center and the key light is placed to the right side, shooting more of a side angle. Um, it is a little bit more frontal, allowing some light to creep over the nose, but it's not too much where it's kind of one in frame and two creating a bigger frontal light. I want it to be kind of contrasty. So moving the camera now to that side profile, if you were to leave that key light there, this shadow side would be eight very hard light cutting off the image from the shadow to the highlights. And I didn't want that much of contrast for this particular scene. So what I did to completely fix that issue was take the key light and just move it a little bit more frontal. So as your camera moves, your key light should move a little bit to adjust the mood and contrast you're going for. So moving it more frontal allowed the light to kind of hit this side of my face a lot more and create a nice roll off shadow side to the highlights instead of it being a hard cutoff line. So that's a quick tip here from going from the wide to the close up. Depending on your contrast ratio and the mood, move the key light more frontal for a bit of a softer roll off and keep it more side if you're looking for that higher contrast ratio and more of a dramatic image. All right, so how'd I do? Six minutes? Probably not. We're probably like 15 or something by now. But either way, hopefully you enjoyed today's uh, lighting and cinematography breakdown. And I know I probably sound like a broken record, but I am like you guys, I'm growing, I'm learning, I'm trying different things and just trying to understand who I am and what I like, what I don't like. And I can't stress practice enough. Whatever you want to do is cinematography, directing, editing, sports, painting. You have to practice. If you want to be the best at something, you have to practice, you have to, understand who you are you have to get to know yourself you have to know what you like what you don't like and learn the equipment because when you're on set you need to kind of understand these things to make sure that the the set goes smoothly and you kind of know what you're talking about all right so yeah keep practicing i believe in you guys thank you again for joining me as always i really appreciate it until next time peace